This month we are at the beautiful Board Hill Gardens and we are well and truly into spring. For me, meteorologically, it is March, April, May. That's how we gather our stats. But astronomically, it was the 20th of March, the spring equinox, when the sun's directly above the equator and the days then get longer. But it has felt like anything but spring. It's just been so cold, particularly those frosty nights. So this episode, I'll be looking at why last month was so crazy. I'll be looking at the forecast for the month ahead for May, meeting our expert gardener who'll be telling us about what you should be doing in your garden this month, plus also finding out about the science of grass. Very interesting and lots of this all linked to climate change. So it's now time for us to meet our expert. So I'm joined by Andy, who is the head gardener here at Board Hill. This place is amazing. How long have you been here? How, how long have you loved gardening for? Oh, uh, I've been gardening since I was, uh, so I come from a very keen, a family of keen gardeners. I've been here, what, 12 years now? So, yeah, a lifelong, uh, lifelong passion. And how has April been for you? Well, we're sitting here in glorious sunshine, <laughs> no. but April, um, yeah, it's been great for many people, but for us gardeners, it's just been, well, it's so cold, yeah. so dry, mm -hmm. it's just another challenging, challenging month. Sometimes I feel like these things are my fault. Well, <laughs> we, yeah, we do shout at the screen when the weather, weather, weather people are on. But you're, but you're so right. It, it, it's been cold, it's been dry, but it's been exceptional. You know, the mm. stats from the Met Office show daytime, nighttime temperatures below average, <clears> particularly the nighttime ones with so many more frost than we would yeah. normally see for April. Rainfall's been way below average, and actually this month looks like it will be one of the coldest Aprils we have ever recorded. But cast in mind back a year ago, it was the fifth warmest April that we have yeah. ever recorded. This huge swing is just you know, a sign of things to come with yeah. climate change. So, so why, why is this? It, the jet stream. Oh. It can be our friend, <laughs> it can be our foe. And at this time of the year, I think it's really easy to forget, you know, winter wasn't that long ago. We're on this mm. knife edge. So the jet stream divides that cold air that sits to the north and all of that warm air that sits to the south and along it, the dividing line, this knife edge where we have rain. So last summer, the jet stream was to our north, the UK sat there and we were on the warm mm. side of it and we stayed dry and sunny most mm. of the time. This year it shifted just a few hundred miles south but on the cold side of the jet stream and that has made a world oh, of difference. Yeah. So how has April been for you here in the garden and for gardeners actually because April should have been April showers. We didn't have many. We didn't. Uh, the only April shower I can remember was a snow shower, which yeah, <laughs> was really it was. bizarre. So yeah, it's been really challenging because we normally start our grass cutting normally in March in a normal year. Um, we managed to get some cuts in, but during uh, this month, because it's been so cold and so dry uh, in many parts of the garden, the grass just hasn't grown. Yeah. So, you know, last year we were out busy cutting away. This, this year it's, it's a lot more relaxed, really. So April was a really quiet month in, in the, the cutting of the grass. Indeed, yes. So uh, can I expect a, a more normal May? Nah, normal. What is normal, normal. <laughs> in this world that we live in where yeah. we have climate change and all these right. extremes? I mean, yeah, it will warm up in May. The days are getting longer. There is more sunshine and there will be fewer frosts. But there's a phrase, nay cast the clout till May is out. So there is still a chance of getting frost in May. I'll be bringing a full forecast for May later on. So thinking about cutting the grass in May, mm. What is your plan? Because the first cuts come a lot later and, and I haven't heard many mowers in my street, no, if I'm honest. No. Uh, the thing to remember when you start cutting grass for the first time in the year, whether it be March or May, is set the cutter really high. Um, you don't want to scalp it. It, needs, it takes two or three cuts to get down to the level that you, you normally have. So put your mower on its highest setting. Uh, our Honda mower has got about five settings, so we put it on the highest setting. We might do two or maybe three cuts at that high setting, and then next time we go down to the next setting down. You never want to take more than 30% off each uh, time. 30%. Yeah, Good that's top the figure to, to remember. So you bring out your old trusty mower. Yeah. And I've noticed you like a stripe on your lawn. We do, bits. yeah. A, st <laughs> a good lawn always has to have a stripe. So uh, the roller on the Honda mower does good, do a good stripe. I mean, we've got four acres of grass here wow. to, to mow around the garden. So the Honda's ideal for getting on those little nooks and those small areas, uh, and particularly the rotor stop, which allows us to disengage the cutters 
like when we're crossing paths without actually stopping the engine is a good feature. It saves time, Clever. 50 minutes trying to catch up with, with, with mowing. And we also collect the grass as well when we're cutting. That, that helps with, with, with the appearance as well. So Yeah, that's a question. Yeah. To keep or not to keep the clippings, what do you do? We, on most times, we collect the cuttings. The mower has got um, a good, I think it's about 70 odd litres, which is quite a lot of grass wow. clippings, yeah. Um, which we instantly compost and reuse in ah, the gut, yeah. Good. So recycling Circle there. Of life. Yeah. So um, you can um, let the clippings uh, lie on the grass. It's particularly useful in, in a period of drought uh, to leave the clippings, but you only want to leave fine clippings. You don't want to leave a whole carpet of dead grass. Okay. So if that you, helps to stop it being scorched, does it? Or? Uh, yeah, well, it may, may hold some moisture in. Mm -hmm. It's a, not like a little bit of a, a mat to hold moisture in. So, but it does need to be fine clippings only. And so what if your grass is really brown? What, what should we do about that? Should we be watering our grass? We don't water the grass. I mean, we would water um, any uh, newly planted turf or newly sown grass seeds, definitely do that. But the, the main grass areas, uh, no, watering is, is not the done thing. The secret to getting a, a, a lawn through the summer is doing your preparation, uh, certainly in the previous autumn. So that's when you need to be feeding, weed killing, scarifying, spiking, yeah. and some of that to a certain extent in the spring. If you really get your, your, your grasses resilient, it will put up with quite a lot of abuse and drought during the summer. It will go brown, but it will all come back again uh, later in the season. So yeah, watering is, is not for us. A year round project. So oh, yeah. what else should we be doing in our gardens this month in May? Um, well, we, we might be cutting grass. Um, whatever the we'll weather. We'll definitely be cutting grass. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, weeds are always growing. They seem to grow 12 months of the year. Yes. So keep on top of weeding. Uh, days like today are pretty good to get the hoe out because the weeds will shrivel. Um, certainly because of the dry weather we've had, any planting you did in the winter or in the early spring, make sure those plants are well watered. Um, we're also thinking towards summer. So we're thinking bedding plants. Mm -hmm but resist the temptation to rush down the garden centre and plant up your garden. If you do buy them, give them some protection. As you mentioned earlier, there's still a risk of frost, yes. but look towards the end of the month before you're planting those out in your garden. Um, other big jobs that we've got in the garden here uh, will give a lot of our evergreen hedges a trim, yeah. but obviously do watch out for nesting birds because they're around at this oh, time of yeah, the year. So, um, so yeah, a lot, a lot of sort of little maintenance jobs, but um, all reliant on normal weather. <laughs> <laughs> what is normal? So I said we were talking about the science of grass. There is a lot more to it than you might think. What are the things that we need to come together to get the best, the best lawn? lawn? Well, there's, there's four factors that sort of affect growth of grass and, and many green plants. So it's temperature, mm -hmm. light, mm -hmm. water and nutrients. Um, we can't control light really. No. Plenty of light today. There will be more sunshine. More sunshine. So, yeah, there will yeah. be more growing in yeah. May. Yeah. Temperature again, we can't really control that again. So um, the and we two need we, that magic number. Yes, five magic degrees. Five degrees. Yes. Which so, we barely had. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Or we some, will. Yeah, too much. We will. Um, so the two we can control are nutrients and and the water and water to a certain extent. Although, yeah, don't really go watering. Um, I mentioned earlier that autumn and certainly spring is a good time to put a lawn feed on. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind when you do uh, feed your lawn to use the correct uh, lawn food because you use a different one in the autumn. In the autumn you're looking at promoting root growth to help the grass oh. get through the winter. Whereas in the spring you're promoting uh, the growth above ground so that uses a different fertiliser so make you you're sure you use the right one. Is it too late to do that in May? It's probably getting a little late, but yeah, it, if, if conditions are right, what you want is moist ground and the threat of rain sort of soon after you put the, the fertiliser down. If that doesn't happen, then you have to get the sprinkler out and give it a bit of water. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you probably could get away with it in May if nothing has really happened. Fantastic. Okay. Great top tips. Thank you so much, Andy. So May, we are hoping it will, <laughs> we'll have some rain. We're also hoping it will be warm and we can get out and enjoy those gardens and give it a good old cut. So here is the all important look ahead for the month of May.
we'd leave behind a record-breaking April. It was both the sunniest and the frostiest April ever recorded and the fourth driest. May followed suit. Our early May bank holiday Monday, that morning, the coldest one we've ever recorded and also the windiest one. In fact, it was so windy, it generated half of all UK's electricity. That's the most we've ever had in one day because of wind. The month ahead finally brings some much needed rain for our gardens. The first half of May looks like sunshine and showers, the showers that we should have had in April. The second half a bit more uncertain, most likely the north cloudier, wetter and windier, most likely the south drier and brighter. Temperatures throughout remain around about average with still the risk of some nighttime frosts.